Okay, what I want to go through and do today is look at the center of gravity of four particles. Uh, now these four particles have been arranged in a square grid uh, that is one meter on each leg. So we've got a one kilogram particle, a two kilogram, a three kilogram, and four kilogram particles. Uh, this one kilogram particle is at the origin, the two kilogram particle is one meter above that, the three kilogram particle is at a location of one one, and then this four kilogram particle lies along the x-axis one meter away from the origin. So what we're going to do is go through and use the center of gravity equation in order to find the center of gravity in both the x and the y axes. So let's start with the x axis. The center of gravity is given by this equation right here. This equation right here. And what this is telling us is the location along the x-axis of the center of gravity. So this is going to tell us where along the horizontal axis the center of gravity lies. Now what this is is looking at the mass and position of individual particles. So what we do in the numerator here is we add up all of the masses times their positions for all the particles in our assembly. And so what we have here is an assembly of four particles. So what we're going to have is a summation of four different terms here. You see this goes m1, x1, m2, x2, and this can keep going for as many terms as we want, hence the mn. This just keeps going in for each particle. Then in the numerator, really what we have is just the total mass or the sum of the masses of all of our particles. Now you'll notice this is based on the x-axis here, but we could apply this later to the z-axis or x-axis. Uh, now you'll see the way this is written, this is based on the x-axis, but we could apply this to the y-axis or even to the z-axis if we want to deal with things in three dimensions. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to do a, what is more or less a bit of bookkeeping, and that is going through and looking at each particle individually applied to this equation. So let's start with this one kilogram particle down here. We have a one kilogram particle. Now its horizontal position is zero. Moving on to our two kilogram particle. We have a two kilogram particle and I know it's above the one kilogram particle, but along the X axis, it is still at a position of zero onto the three kilogram particle with three kilograms at a horizontal position of one. And lastly, we have a four kilogram particle also at a position of one. Now, what I do want to say here is that each of these particles, even though I drew them as different sizes, uh, they're all point masses. Okay. I don't want to worry about the distribution of these masses. Yeah, that's not what we're looking at here today. So we're going to say this is infinitely small, and this is infinitely small, and this is infinitely small. Same with this one. It's it's a mass, but it's it's a point mass. I mean, it's it's a real nice point mass, but you know, it's it's a point mass nonetheless. So we're not worried about distribution of particles here. Okay. So we've got everything in our numerator. Now let's worry about our denominator. So we've got one, two, three, and four kilograms. So that's going to be the summation of one plus two plus three plus four, our total mass. Now, when we reduce this down, we get the center of gravity along the x-axis is seven tenths, or we could express that as a decimal as 0 0.7. You, you do whatever you want. So what this tells us is the center of gravity is 0.7 along the x-axis from the origin. So that means the center of gravity of this assembly of particles lies somewhere along this line. Now, vertically, we don't know quite where it lies yet. We'll calculate that in a minute. But we know the center of gravity lies somewhere along this line here. So let's go through and figure out the vertical coordinate of our center of gravity. Using the same equation just applied to the y-axis,
This time we'll be applying the Y coordinates to each of these particles rather than the X coordinates. Now for our one kilogram particle, which is at the origin, it doesn't change, it's still at a position of zero. For a two kilogram particle, remember we're plugging in the Y coordinates. So we've got two kilograms at a height of one meter. Plus we have three kilograms with a height of one plus four kilograms, and the four kilograms, I know it was at an X position of one over here, but its height is zero. And this is gonna be over the total mass again, which doesn't change depending on the axis we're looking at. So it's still gonna be one plus two, plus three, plus four. This is gonna give us the center of gravity of five tenths, or 0.5, I'll put meters on there, and meters. So this means the center of gravity lies halfway between the upper masses and the lower masses. And so what we come up with is this point right here. And this point, this intersection between where we know the center of gravity lies vertically and where it lies horizontally, this right here is the center of gravity in two dimensions of this system of four particles. Now we could go through and do this again with the Z axis, but we haven't put any Z coordinates on any of our particles here. Uh, what I want you to take away from this is that anytime we're trying to find the center of gravity of a series of particles, all we need to do is simply plug them into these formulas. Now where these formulas come from, that has to do with torque and really the torque by gravity, which I don't want to get into today. All I need you to understand is that this point, the center of gravity, is effectively the balance point of these four particles. If we were to put them together on some very light or massless rigid frame and try to balance them, this right here would be the balance point. And so on that note, that's all for now.